So by now you guys have definitely seen the unveil of all of this machinery and fancy pieces of aluminum and steel and God knows what other metals involved. We have to make it run. Nader is here burning the midnight oil with me <laughs> right now. We're going over his magic for the uh, dry sump plate, which is also gonna be the engine mount to the chassis. And then also how we're gonna package all of the different pieces, all, the alternator, the oil pump, which is external now, the power steering pump. Yes, this vehicle will have power steering as well as a mechanical fuel pump. So we've got a lot of packaging to deal with. And he, just like you guys saw on the rotary Corvette, is the right guy for the job. So the current magic in the making is us determining where and how this oil pan is gonna fit. And we just came up with the fact that we're definitely not gonna do any sort of front mount like the Corvette. It's been holding the engine up just quite nicely, but that's just a, a brace to put us means to an end. The main concern I have is on this side, we've got the drive shaft coming through here, turbo intake, etc. The plates mounting features need to sit below this diameter because i assume the shaft is not larger than that correct correct okay we have to sit below that and then also have you know a bracing welded onto the framework yep. that will clear that as well and then same thing on this side this side it's not going to be too bad but we have so much to fit on this side that we need to take into account the alternator we got the alternator, we got the dry sump pump, we got the fuel pump, which will sit on the back of the dry sump pump. We've got the power steering pump. We have to place the power steering reservoir somewhere. What else do we have? We got a list. <laughs> we got the coil bracket. The oil pedestal won't be a problem. We got to make sure we take into account the trigger wheel and spacing everything out properly. And then that's going to be a concern because steering is right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Electric water pump won't be a problem. Routing on that should be simple enough. And then your throttle body is the other thing I'm concerned with. So now we're above the steering, but it's gonna have to route. So I was thinking fashion. that, you know, the throttle body is like right here. Yeah. You know, there's gonna be both air and coolant. <laughs> right. Of course the air is gonna be the biggest pipe. I think three and a half, half inch in diameter. Yeah. Dream, like I said earlier, was getting it underneath these. This one's, they didn't provide a bolt long enough, mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. looks shifted. Mm -hmm. But bringing it kind of up or uh, I really don't want to do this, but you could write route pipes right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the final intercooler? No, no, this okay. is just a, it's from the three rotor. You got it, got it. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll take this out right now yep. and then we'll do the full engine bay scan. We'll start with the high priority stuff, which is mounting the block and then figuring out all the pumps, all the accessories getting it to sit in there and not need to come out again. And then we can play with different routing options after that's done, Yep. right? When we have a better idea of how everything's gonna sit with the geometry that can't move, what we can change is the shape of the, the end tanks, both for the radiator and the intercooler, Yeah. you know? And then, uh, and then you'll be able to set that up based on what can't change. Let me get the uh, blue thing out of the way. Let me yeah. get this out of the way. So that way you can set up your fancy Scanner. We're gonna scan this as is, then I'm gonna scan the block in its entirety, and then we gotta figure out if we can remove this four rotor so I can get empty space. No, it'll be centered between those two. Centered here? Yeah. We got driver side, passenger side. Got enough of the rail that I can model the rest of it if I need to. Got the bottom of the block. Got the front diff so I can get the drive shaft modeled in there. I think I got pretty much everything. Yeah, that looks good. And I got enough of the engine that I can do spark plugs, coil bracket, pedestal, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna save this. We're gonna let this fuse. So now we got to figure out accessories. We're probably going to end up scrapping these brackets yeah, because we have so much more to fit in here. Like this sets it out way too far. Yeah, that you is know, way we've got, Yeah, we've got all that stuff in the way. And then these are giant fittings. So, <laughs> you know, we have to be able to fit, you know, dash 12s in and out. We've got scavenge in, scavenge in, scavenge in. These three ports are going to pull from the pan. Yeah. Scavenge out, scavenge out, scavenge out is going to get routed to the tank. This is going to pull from the tank, pressure in, 
Oh. And then pressure out is going to feed the block. Why are there so many? Well, you got a longer block, right? You want yeah. to pull as much of the oil you can from the sump as possible. We're going to do one, two, three. Because you drop oil from this, from this iron, from this iron, from this iron. I call them irons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. From this plate, from this place. <laughs> yeah. From, from, <laughs> from the aluminums. Um, so you're dropping uh, oil, uh, you know, between the rotors here, here, and here. Yeah. So that's what we'll pull from. Okay. That's so gonna this, be, is, this is going to be tons of like frothy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah, exactly. In each of these is like a gear that looks just like what's in a supercharger. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then there are different brands have different designs for the gears. But basically, this is pulling from the pan to feed the tank. And then the tank separates the air and the oil. If it's a well-designed tank. <laughs> from the tank, your pickup will be from the bottom of the tank. Uh, where all your oil has collected post uh, baffling and, and yeah. cavitation removal and all that jazz. And then, so you're going to pull from the tank now, yep. which is what's supposed to be pressure in. Yep. Uh, and then pressure out is going to go to coolers? your oiling system. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, so that would go coolers to block and then down the sump into the pump, pump the tank, and then. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. the whole ride. And then, like I said, we're going to double check that to yep. make sure that I'm remembering everything properly. Yeah. Um, but that's how it should work. What I'm thinking is we mount the dry sump pump lower. We need room for these fittings. Okay. Yes. And then get them as close to the pan oh, as nice. possible. Yep. And then we can put the alternator uh, closer to the top here and maybe do a bracket that puts the alternator and power steering right next to each other uh, in the same line. Okay. okay, so power steering and alternator can share a belt. Dry sump can have its own belt. And then the fuel pump is going on the back of it anyway. And we're giving ourselves enough room for the dry sump, both for fittings on top uh, and fittings on bottom. And then for fittings on top, what we might do, if what's available on the market is too high profile, yeah. Yeah. we might do some billet blocks that force a sharper 90. Okay. Okay, so we don't want to go too sharp obviously we've got flow considerations to take into account yeah. but we also have a lot of packaging issues with all the stuff that's going on here that uh, so we'll tackle that issue in design based off what I've scanned and then by putting the dry sump pump lower as well we have room again for the spark plugs on rotor one and right. two so then we can do our coil bracket right here and then just wrap everything down and around. That's badass. Mm -hmm. Do you know where you're putting the dry sump tank? No, that was actually my follow-up question for yeah. this. Realistically, you know, it's something in the Bermuda Triangle yeah. down here that crossed my mind. Yeah. And then obviously the, the car's gonna get tinned out. Yeah. You know, so. I'll ask Anthony if he has a tank that'll fit in here. Okay, time to skin this. That's it. That's, that's the whole. That's the whole narrative. <laughs> it's just time to skin this. There's no other payoff, guys. In theory, we could make the uh, dry sump pan out of wood, <laughs> <laughs> and we're we're halfway there right now. We cannot, in theory, do that. In theory, it would not work. <laughs> Nader and his sweet girlfriend are animals because it is now three in the morning, and they just left. So huge thanks, huge thanks to Built to Apex. Is the the creative weirdness that's needed to finish this damn car. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without him. And so I, uh, we've got, our current plans are this. This week, so in, in the next seven days, I'm filming schedule, who knows what, but the next seven days, we're gonna have a dry sump oil pan and some of the brackets. And then the next week following that, which should fit our timeline of getting this thing running, is all of the bracketry to make sure that the oil pump, the alternator, all those brackets are set close, tight, the ignition coils, all of that, 
tight and mounted to the engine. This is heating up. It is so weird. It is so weird to be working on this car as a vehicle that is meant to run. Not just the chassis, not just the idea, not the body, but the actual heart of this vehicle. It's been three years for me. And to, f to see this, into, it's just overwhelming. So it's, it's on. It's on. It's very clearly on. <laughs>